Hello and welcome to another tech video on my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss various ways of structuring your Terraform projects. I wanted to create this video since a long time as I have got many queries from DevOps engineers on how to structure their Terraform projects. Please note, I have come up with 4 structures which I have used in my real time projects. If you have any suggestions, I am open to feedback. Please let me know in the comment section. So without further ado, let's discuss the various ways in which you can structure your Terraform projects. This is the first one and the very basic structure you can use in your Terraform projects. This structure can be utilized by organizations and startups with relatively small infrastructure and a defined set of services. I have already created a detailed video on AWS 3 tier architecture in Terraform where I have utilized this structure. I will mention the YouTube link and the GitHub link in the description below. So here project 1 is the Terraform project within which we have backend.tf, alb.tf, asd.tf, vpc.tf, rds.tf, outputs.tf, terraform.tf vars, variables.tf and versions.tf. As the name suggests, backend.tf will have the configuration information of your remote backend. alb.tf will have configuration of your application load balancer. ASG.TF will have details of your EC2 instances, launch configurations and auto-scaling groups. RDS.TF will have configuration of your relational database services from AWS. Outputs.TF will have all the outputs defined which can be later used in other resources. Terraform.TF vars will have your variable definition and variables.TF will have your declaration. Versions.TF will have provider and version information which you are going to leverage in your project. The major advantage of this structure is, it is simple and easy to configure and maintain. The problem with this approach is, as the organization grows, it will become little complicated to add multiple environments to the project. So to counter that issue, we have designed the next structure. The major benefit of having this structure is, we can accommodate and configure multiple environments in your projects. The project 2 is the root of the project. Here we see two folders, environments and modules. I will talk about the modules later. Let's first discuss on the contents of the environment folder. For demonstration purpose, I have shown dev and prod in real life. In addition to dev and prod, it can have UAT, SIT, test and staging, etc. So let's deep dive into the dev folder. Here we see ALB, EC2, RDS, VPC folders. Each folder will be treated as a separate Terraform entity and it will have its own state configuration. The benefit of this approach is, we reduce the blast radius, if something goes wrong with your infrastructure, only that particular piece will be affected and not the entire environment. For many people, this might not be the feasible approach and little complicated to handle. For those, we have another structure which we will discuss at the end of this video. So if you see the file structure inside the ALB folder, it is quite similar to the previous example. The only difference we see here is the data file which will have references to the external state files and the main.tf which will have ALB configuration. In the previous example, we had files for services, here we have folders. Apart from that, all other files I have already explained in the previous example. In this example, we will have to run the Terraform init, plan and apply individually in a sequence. So firstly, we will run it in the VPC folder as it is the base of the project. Then we will run other folders as per our requirement. The prod folder will have a similar kind of a structure. Many people might argue that we can leverage Terraform CLI workspaces instead of having environment folders. Yes, we could have done that, but the issue is workspace is okay if we have a consistent infrastructure across the environments. The above structure is flexible and it can handle custom requirements as per our environment. For example, your dev account and services can be publicly exposed and it can be in a single subnet layer with open internet. But the same might not be the case with the production infrastructure as it can have multiple subnets for web, app, db, etc. So to accommodate these custom requirements, we prefer having individual folders per environments. Having said that, this structure can be utilized with Terraform Cloud Workspaces. I will create a separate video on that topic. Moving to the modules folder, we have similar folders ALB, EC2, RDS and VPC. Each folder will have main.tf, outputs.tf, variables.tf and versions.tf. I have already explained about these files previously. The benefit of having modules is, we don't have to write the core infrastructure again and again. We can directly consume the same from the environments folder. The next structure is quite similar to the previous one. The environment folder will remain the same. The only difference here is, instead of having folders per service, we have clubbed the services as per their purpose. 
So here we have compute which can have your EC2 instances, lambda functions, etc. Database will have your RDS, DynamoDB, etc. Network will have VPCs, subnets, transit gateways, etc. And finally, storage will have your S3 buckets, EFS volumes, etc. Similarly, you can design your modules as well. So the choice is yours. You can have multiple services according to their purpose into a single directory or segregate those on the basis of services. The file structure will remain exactly the same as the previous use case. The last and the final structure that we are going to see today is similar to the second and the third ones. Here we have tried to remove the complexity of maintaining multiple state files per environment and tried to make it simple. The model structure is exactly the same as per the third example. Here in the dev and production folder, we are not having any subfolders for either services or resource groups like network. Instead, we have everything directly in the root of the environment folder. So these were the directory structures I have followed in my real life projects. Which one do you think is the most viable solution? If you have a better solution than these four structures, please feel free to comment. If you have any issues, concerns or suggestions in any of the examples, please let me know in the comment section.